<laughs> Two hits. Let's watch Roger. And uh, this is just a casual, ca this is just kind of a hit around like mm -hmm. session. This is a warm up yeah. uh, before a match. And what I want you to pay attention to is uh, length of uh, swing of uh, both his uh, forehand drive and his backhand drive. And just watch how his racket comes around his body on each shot, even on an out ball that he's playing. Um, everything oh, is, everything is very long and very uh, fluid. And even when he, when he receives like a deeper, like harder shot, you'll see him maintain that, that length. And so this is how good players hit good shots. It's like regardless of uh, stance or posture, they still have the, the mindfulness and the body control to still let the racket swing long and free. Okay. So when we watch you receive a consistent ball, on these, you didn't have any trouble maintaining. Like even though you had to move a, a decent distance to get to the shot, uh -huh. you're moving you know, three, four steps to get to the shot, yeah. you're getting there with really good balance, you look super athletic, um, you look very composed, everything is coiled you know, really mm -hmm. strongly. Yeah. And so you have the ability here to hit a strong, solid shot, even though you had a long ways to go. Mm -hmm. And so on these slow shots where it was the same feed over and over again, you were in a good rhythm, good yeah. timing, everything's looking strong, everything's looking athletic, and it's mm -hmm. like, no problem. Now, <laughs> <laughs> you, knew, you knew it was coming. Yeah, it's at, some point, at some point, it had to come. So when you guys were uh, playing points is when that would start to go away. So here's a point where you hit a bunch of forehands. And the first one is just an easy ball down the middle, pretty short. And yeah. so here you're comfortable. You, you, know, you, you have a pretty high comfort level with transitioning forwards. In fact, that's kind of what you want to do in points you were mentioning yesterday, <laughs> yeah. is you want to attack and move forwards. And so on this particular shot, you maintain pretty good length, but it's still not quite the same as when the ball machine was feeding to you. The racket head, remember the last one on the, uh, from the ball machine, we were looking from this direction yeah. and we could see most of the racket like around the back of your body. Uh -huh. We can see here that you're starting to kind of come a little bit short and it's looking more tentative. And this is looking a little bit more, more careful. Like you're you're kind of like steering the racket out towards your target mm -hmm. instead of coming all the way around your right. body. Okay. The next ball is uh, you're having to move around a little bit, and you still look pretty comfortable here and balanced and set up. But as you hit, look at how your racket now stays completely in front of you. And so it's no longer coming around to the other side of your body. And the reason why it's not happening is because you're being tentative with the actual swing. And so the racket's coming to a stop in front of, in front of your body instead of coming around to the back of your body. The next shot is high and deep. And now we're gonna see like the most extreme example of this, where from here, you still look like a, mm -hmm. a good tennis player. Like mm -hmm. you, you could still hit a big shot from here. Mm -hmm. But on the way back, you end up just kind of blocking it. So this is like one, one two, three. We got baby bear, mama bear, this is uh, papa bear. <laughs> and this is like really just your arm is moving to yeah. hit the ball. Huh. You got, and you got stressed here, so I don't blame you. Yeah. But this is the difference between where you are now and four or five. Mm -hmm. A four or five player would have hit the short ball, the medium ball, and the deep ball, all with full racket head speed and like yeah. full, full confidence. Yeah. And right now, depending on the level of stress that you're under, mm -hmm. you revert back to beginner type habits. Okay. Where this is mostly arm just kind of defensively, you know, pushing the ball back. And I don't blame you, it wasn't an easy shot. Mm -hmm. I remember Roger's shot that he hit where the ball like landed yeah. on the baseline yeah. and he just totally, you know, let it go totally confidently, totally loosely. Yeah. And so that's the difference between a world-class player and an amateur player who's just like, well, let's just kind of like shovel this back. I know this works. Like, let's just go yeah. ahead and get it back over right. against a four or five opponent. They're going to just dominate that type of uh, weak response. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what we need to do is take basically what you already are able to do mm -hmm. and 
expand it across your whole range of responses and just kind of push the boundaries of how and when you can actually execute a confident swing. Okay. Uh, you're going to start off in the middle of the baseline. Matt, can you please t uh, yeah. grab the, uh, I'll grab it for you. Can you guys no, I got it. We're going to start off just with, without hitting any balls uh, and just making 60 seconds of really calm, smooth shadow swings. And I want you to kind of visualize, we were watching Roger from that back angle, how he was maintaining his length and his smoothness, his flu fluidity. Mm -hmm. I just want to see 60 seconds of you at half speed swings, okay. just recreating that kind of feel. So show us the smoothest version of Tim's forehand you can possibly show us. Good. And so just watch how your body is moving. But really, even more importantly than that, just watch the path of the racket and watch how long of a path it is, how circular it is. Mm -hmm. That's what you want, right? Yes. Okay. When you uh, contrast that to what your response was during, it's like a very stark uh, contrast. Here's, here's that. Uh, even you're more, even you're more confident forehands in this point. Do you, do you see the, I can see it right, yep. right here. You see the difference the here? Tightness, yeah. How now yep. Tim's being careful. Yep. Tim, Tim's making yep. sure he's not missing. Tim, Tim's making sure that he doesn't lose the mat. <laughs> yeah. And so every, everything goes into control mode. Yeah. All right. So here's what we're going to do now, Tim. You're going to internalize and kind of continue to repeat those same feelings and we're going to go back and forth between two shadow swings and then two easy feeds from Matt. So you're going to shadow, shadow where you're just reminding your body, here's how I want it to feel. Here's how I want it to feel. And then when Matt feeds to you, you're going to try to recreate that exact same feeling on two hits. Two hits, the same technique. Okay, two shadows. <laughs> two hits. All right, good. Come on over here. Why do you think that is? I'm so loose, I guess. And with the looseness comes efficiency. Yeah. When you're when you're. I'm hitting as hard as I like when I try to hit hard. <laughs> it feels like it feels like the ball is traveling fast. Anyway, when you try to control the swing, your muscles contract, uh -huh. and when they contract, the energy that should flow out of your body gets gets mm -hmm. sucked up, and it, it doesn't actually make it out to the racket head. Yeah. So now that you're putting a premium on on just being relaxed, every bit of energy that you're transitioning through your body is all making it out to the racket. Yeah. And that's. Ideally, I mean, the way you should feel, you know, we, we never get perfect, you know, this side of heaven, uh, delivering all the energy, you know, into the ball, mm -hmm. but that's kind of what you should be striving for. Yeah. Okay. And so watch your, uh, just kind of go kind of halfway here and we'll watch, uh, watch this couple. It was about halfway. I think that it really kind of clicked for you. Yeah. The first half, I, there was a little bit of variance between like shot one and shot two. And then about halfway through, they all started looking very, very repetitive and very similar. And that's, I think, about where I started it here, where everything had the same tempo, the same length, the same smoothness. And so there was very little uh, variation and it was just repeat, repeat, repeat. And that's, in a nutshell, what we want you to do. So we're going to start to stress, to stress, stress. A bit now. <laughs> okay. right. and we're going to test like how, what do we, what, okay. what exactly is it that causes Tim to go back to that, that type? Okay. So right. like we, we have already obviously established that you, you can do it, yeah. but we've done it in a very controlled environment. And now we're going to start to add in some variables okay. and stress you a little bit. And that's what you need to do at home to yeah. train yourself. Because eventually we, we want to be able to do this under extreme stress. Yep. Right now we're in extreme calm. And, and so we're facilitating that calmness. Uh, but now we're going to start to poke you a little bit. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
That's great, Tim. Hey! <laughs> Almost made it in. All right, two shadows. And then Matt's going to feed four balls to four different locations. It's going to be his choice. And you're going to respond with the same tempo on all four. Good looseness. There you go. One of those four was a little bit steered, it was a little bit tight. Did you feel which one? The last one? Nope. Come here. So here's those four that you just hit. Watch the, watch the flow of your racket on all four. So how, do we, how do we feel about that one? That one looked good. I agree. Through. I agree. It didn't stop. Yep, I agree. Here's number two. There you go. That one seemed good. Oh, too. Well, that, that gives it away. Yeah. <laughs> watch, yeah. The, watch the racket's it, movement. Yeah. You see how it looks totally like unencumbered and it's, it just stays, stays passive and loose the whole way? Yeah. There you go. How do we feel about that one? So I guess that one. Here's where it starts getting like a little bit subtle. Like there's no jagged edges to this. Yeah. But your arm gets very rigid yep. and straight. And so you actually you maintain smoothness pretty well, but your forearm and your hand are are really gripping down on mm -hmm. the on the racket and you're steering okay. you're steering your arm through. Okay. Back in the seventies, this would have been Yeah, man, that's 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 your <laughs> Yeah. You hit, hit through five balls and yeah. Just point right at it, like bowling. Yeah, yeah. But it's because your, your arm is kind of locked down. It's, it's just a little bit rigid. Okay. Relative to where we came from, this, you know, is still, it looks fantastic. We're starting to get a little bit, you know, nitpicky now. Yeah. Just to really get you as loose and free as possible. Right. Um, but that's the one that I felt like you were a little bit rigid on. Okay. I think the last one was, was fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, pff, that might have been the best one. So when you said the last one, I was like, wow, we need to take a look at this. Cause that was that was super passive and relaxed. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. So now we're gonna do it in a live rally. Okay. So you and Matt are gonna rally. Eventually, we're gonna keep track of score, but not yet. Okay. At first, it's just gonna be to find the tempo. Okay. So no score, no like winner, loser, whatever. Mm -hmm. You're only thinking about maintaining the tempo and the looseness, and that's and that's it. Okay. All right. Let's do. It. Go. A little bit steered. Fifteen, twenty minutes ago, I asked you, where does a confidence swing come from? Do you remember your answer? Yeah, from, from the core and mm -hmm. relaxation. That's right. So. On a high deep ball like this one, let's watch your, your core. Watch the swoosh on your, your shirt uh -huh. relative to the baseline. Yeah. Ideally, on all four hands, we want to get the, the body around to about parallel to the baseline. Uh -huh. So you're starting off with lots of room to be able to turn, mm -hmm. but when you make contact, how much has your body actually turned? Not, not fully. Are you parallel to the baseline? No, I'm like 45. Yeah, at best. Yeah, you're, the logo is facing like right at the iPad, yeah. and I'm standing. I'm okay. standing there. Okay. So you've got you've got a ways to go. Yeah. So can the arm relax on this shot? No. So your body hasn't done a whole lot. Right. So that means something else has to hit the ball, and it's going to end up being your your arm, um, because it's too late for anything else. Like your your body's late to the party. So your, your arm has got to take control over things and get the job done. Right. So this is going to end up being, if you watch it in, in full, uh, full speed, it's going to end up being a very rigid, oh, yeah, you know, tight, tight shot. Your arm had to do all the work, and that's not going to, that's not going to cut it against the higher level players you're going to play against. Yeah. Contrast that with this. Same height. This might even be a higher shot. Mm-hmm. Where's your body facing on, on this shot at contact? Yeah, almost, 
almost, almost parallel. parallel. Yeah, it's, and it's at shoulder height. So watch your arm on this one. On this one, you can keep it oh, totally loose nice. and relaxed yeah. because your body actually did its job. Uh -huh. If your body hadn't made this turn before contact, then your arm couldn't stay relaxed because it would have had to would have had to hit the ball over the over the net. Mm -hmm. So it all it all starts from from here, mm. and that's what enables the. So watch how, watch how this looks compared to that previous one. That's good. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. They're completely different. That's how yeah. good players hit shots out of their strike zone still really hard with a lot of spin. Yeah. It's very counterintuitive. Uh, you have to completely loosen your arm mm -hmm. and then make sure that your body is providing all the energy you need. If either of those things, and God help you, if neither of those things happen, you, you end up just kind of, yeah, we saw a couple of those when you were playing points against Matt yeah. earlier. Yeah. That one where you were kind of on your back foot and you just kind of like, you know, yeah. shoveled it, shoveled it back. Yeah. This is how you actually need to respond to that shot. And that's how you make it to the next level is responding like this on a high deep shot okay. instead of just like getting it, getting it back. Okay. All right. Any questions? No. I know the feel. I know how it's supposed to feel. I get it now. So now we're going to play another game right. uh, to five. All right. Do it. And you're going to have one focus, and that's going to be to make the tempo the same, the looseness the same on every swing that you hit against Matt. Okay. All right, ready? Yeah. Zeros. <laughs> Steered that one. Good. Oh. Good shot. <laughs> oh, one. Way to commit to it, Tim. Steered it. You steered it. You steered it. That was super tight. Fair ones. Way to commit to it. Ah. One, two. Wow, nice Twos. <laughs> <laughs> Good rally. <laughs> Three, uh, three, two. Uh. No. Four, two. Nice, Tim. Earlier today, Tim, we saw a whole bunch of forehands that looked like this. Oh yeah, tight, I can see it. And it took this much stress to finally start to see it coming back in again. Mm -hmm. Like I said just a minute ago, <clears throat> point play is gonna be, it's the most elevated stress, it's the most, ele it's where that tightness is gonna be most triggered because mm -hmm. you just, you wanna win the, the point. Yes. Uh, during the, your point play earlier, we, re we didn't really see any swings that looked like, like this. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the looseness that we want to see. That's the, the, the tempo and the calmness that we want to see uh, during point play uh, from now on. Okay. Um, it looked to me like during the points, first of all, it's not a coincidence that you did better. You know, you were more competitive, even though you were really just focusing on the, uh, the tempo and the looseness of your arm. Mm -hmm. uh, you played better points and you hit better shots mm -hmm. for that reason. But you also went back towards the, the tight one way more often than just the normal rallies before we were keeping track of score. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to finish out the notes. So you have like all the drills we just did. Mm -hmm. And your job when you go back home is to go down the list through the progressions from easiest to hardest mm -hmm. and then just hang out where you can get about three quarters of the swings are 
really solid and like super smooth and relaxed. Okay. If you get to 50% or below where you feel the tight one coming back, mm -hmm. it's, it's really not going to move you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And right. so that's, that's the way you go through the drills okay. is by uh, either just being very self-aware or ideally record yourself, check it. Mm -hmm. And if you're anywhere around 50%, you need to make it a little bit easier. Okay. Cause if you're 50, 50, are you really going to move in the right direction? Right. You know, if you're doing half the ones the old way and half the ones the new way, you're not really making good progress. Yeah, that makes sense. So you're, you're looking for about 75%, the smooth ones okay. and less than a quarter of the, the old tight Tim. Okay.